Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. And in this video, we're going to look at the continuity of a set function. First, the theorem, let mu be a countably additive set function on a sigma field f. Uh, the next two properties will prove. If a1 through an are all sets in the sigma field f, and an are increasing sets to a limit a, then the limit of the measure of an is equal to the measure of an. And what this is saying is we can take this limit inside the measure, right? The limit of an is a. And that's what this is saying. So in part B, it's if, if sets A1 through A2 all the way you know, to infinity are in the sigma field F and A and are decreasing sets to a limit A, and at least one of them are, are finite, and we'll just say that A1 is finite, then the measure, the limit of the measure of An is equal to the measure of A. Here's the proof. First of all, we have to assume, you know, that if the measure is infinite or infinite, the property still holds, and then we'll prove it for when the measure of a set is finite. So let's say that, that the measure of a n is infinity for some n, then a n can be broken up into these disjoint sets, right? Because in, oh, I don't have an a here. So here's the proof of b. This is the proof of a. And so they're increasing sets. So, and they increase to A, right? So they're subsets of one another. And so A can be thought of it as A N and A minus A N. And they're disjoint sets. And then, so since the, the measure is countably additive, then it's the uh, sum of those two measures. But if A N is infinite, then that's infinity. And so the limit of all, you know, after, uh, well, let's say this. So also, the measure of AK is equal to, and since they're, you know, increasing sets, it can be thought of as AN plus, you know, AK minus AN. And since the measure is countably additive, it's the sum of those two measures, right? Because this union this uh, equals AK, and they're disjoint, so you can break it up. And that's for all K greater than N. So that means that the limit of the ANs, you know, after some point limit, they're, they're all infinity. And that equals the measure of this uh, mu of A, right? So the limit that this property does hold. Uh, similarly, you can do the same rigor moror for the measure of AN when, it's, when one of them's minus infinity, and that's for some N. So next we'll assume that for all n, the measure of a n is finite. And since a n increases, they're increasing sets to a, that means we can write a into disjoint sets. a union a2 minus a1, union a3 minus a2, um, all the way you know, to infinity. And since a, since uh, mu is countably additive, then we can it, the measure of A is actually to the sum of these measures because they're all disjoint sets. But since then, then A1 is a subset of A2, you can break this in one of the previous videos we showed the property of the, it's the measure of A2 minus the measure of A1. And this is for every set. So this is here and then it's plus and then, you know, it's the measure of A3 minus measure of A2, and this goes on forever. But it's a telescoping sum, so you get cancelizations everywhere, except for whatever the limit of that measure of AN is. Well, that's what we wanted to show. Now, to prove part B, if AN are decreasing sets to A, that means A1 minus AN is increasing to A1 minus A. And and since we've assumed that A1 is finite, then these are all finite, and thus the measure of, right, since it's increasing, and we just proved in part A that the limit of this is equal to, to the limit to this, the measure of this, so that's what this says. So this arrow means as N goes to infinity, this measure equals this measure.
All right, we just proved that in part A. But these are subsets of each other, so you can think of as a measure of A minus a measure of A goes in limit to the measure of A1 minus the measure of A. Well, these are finite and equal, so you could subtract them, and then the negative of that converges to the negative of this. We well, multiply by minus 1, and then that shows that it does indeed hold. So the theorem is proven. Now, let a definition of continuous from below and continuous uh, from above. Let mu be a finite and finitely additive set function on the field F. Mu, it, mu is continuous from a, below at each set A in the sigma f, or in the field if A1, A2, all sets of the field F, such that the union of them equals A is in the field and the A ends increase to A. Then the measure of the ANs limit to the measure of A, which says that we can take that limit sign inside the measure. And this is continuous from below. And in calculus, what when we say a, a function is continuous from below, that means that we take a sequence x1 through xn that limits to x, you know, from below. And if the limit if f of xn limits to f of x and equals f of x, then we say it's continuous from below. So this is like a perfect analogy of the same thing that we look at in calculus. And when mu is continuous from above, it means for each a in the field, if the sets a1, a2 are all in the field, and the intersection is equal to a, also in the field, and the sets decrease to a, then the limit of this measure of a n limits to the measure of a, which says that we can take that limit sign inside and it equals this. Okay, so the one theorem that we will need in the ne in upcoming videos, not the next one, but later, and this is this will be used over and over. Let mu be a finitely additive set function on the field F. If mu is continuous from below, then mu is countably additive on the field F. If mu is continuous from above at the empty set, then mu is countably additive on the field F. To prove that, we let A1, A2, dot, 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 be disjoint sets in F, the field F, whose union belongs to the field. Now, if Bn if we set Bn to equal this partial union from 1 to n, and uh, then Bn increases to A, right? Because if this union goes to A, you know, right, the union A belongs to F, this is an increasing function to A. And, and by hypothesis, we said it was... Um, continuous from below. So this limit equals the measure of Bn limits to the measure of A. However, B of n is equal to this sum, right? Because mu is finitely additive. Right? And these are disjoint sets, right? So the A's are disjoint sets whose union belongs to A. And so mu is finitely additive, so this equals this. But by finite yeah, by finite additivity. So if we take the limit of both sides, the limit of this is A, and the limit of this is just, you know, it's the limit of that sum. Well, that says that it is countably additive. And we've proven part B. Now let A1, A2 be, the proof of B, let A1, A2 be disjoint sets in F, um, whose union belongs to the field F, and let Bn equal this union. Note that Bn is, uh, it's a subset of An, right? So, and that means the measure of A is equal to the measure of Bn plus the measure of A minus Bn, right? If if Bn is a subset, then, then A can be thought of as Bn, and then 
whatever's left in A but minus BN. So those add up to this. Mu is finitely additive, so this measure holds. But since by hypothesis, uh, A minus BN decreases to the empty set, that says that the measure of this decreasing sequence goes to this measure. Right? So it's, uh, it's continuous from above. It, and me the measure of empty set zeros. But this implies that um, the measure of A minus the measure of BN, right, they're subsets of each other, limits to zero. And then that we can take this A to the other side and then multiply by one. That, imp that implies that this measure of, of BN limits to the measure of A. And that's what we wanted to show. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Now, the next video in this playlist is 100% the reason why we have to develop this rich structure around uh, fields and sigma fields and measure, counting of the measure. Um, and that's the whole reason that we're developing this. So I'm going to leave that as a teaser for you. Hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.